Are we going to keep staring at each other, or are you going to invite me in? It's just that I wasn't expecting anybody. If you don't mind my asking, what can I do for you? You need money. I need your investigative skills. I mean, I no longer do detective work. But do come in if you want to. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Blake. Sophia Blake. Mr. McPherson, I need you to investigate a case that is dear to my heart. Just name your price. I haven't investigated in a long time, miss. I really need your investigative skills. I will pay all your expenses. I don't want to upset you, Miss Blake, but I can't help you. Being a detective no longer holds any interest for me. I understand. Especially after your last New York case. Suspected of murder, weren't you? I was offering you the chance to redeem yourself. Never mind. If you'd like to meet me... What number can I dial for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the post office, please? I'd like to send a telegram. Right away, sir. Post a telegram, go ahead, please. I'd like to send a telegram to New York, please. The addressee is one J. Wells, Pinkerton's National Detective Agency, number 57 Broadway. The message reads, Need information on woman named Sophia Blake. Stop. I've made a note of it. It will leave this morning. Done. Sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the Elysee 1528? I want to speak to Sophia Blake. Right away, sir. Sophia Blake, who's speaking? Miss Blake, this is Gus McPherson. Can we meet? I'd like to clarify a few points with you. Meet me in an hour at the restaurant Chez Alexandre. We can talk there.
sir. Welcome to Shea Alexander. Can I do anything for you, sir? Very chic restaurant, Shea Alexander. But I'm just passing by. Our establishment caters to the finest palettes in Paris. If you happen to change your mind, we will be only too pleased to welcome you, sir. My name is Tonio. Welcome to Shea Alexander. Can I do anything for you, sir? A table has been booked under the name of Blake, Sophia Blake. I'm here to meet up with the lady. My name is Gus McPherson. This way, please, sir. Miss Blake is waiting for you. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist for very long, Mr. McPherson. So are you ready to listen to my offer? I don't think you have understood. All I want to do is paint. Everything else is secondary. Unfortunately, Mr. McPherson, I'm in Paris to take advantage of your skills as a private detective. I don't understand. We've never met before. I've never worked for you, neither here nor in New York. Yet here you are asking me to track down your sister's murderer. Why me, Miss Blake? Your reputation preceded you, Mr. McPherson. I have friends who know people at the Pinkerton Agency in New York. You worked there as a detective and had a few problems. The suspicion surrounding you in that murder case proved to be unfounded, of course. I no longer undertake investigations, Miss Blake. But since I have no orders for my paintings at the moment, perhaps I can help you. You mentioned money. I was so hoping you would accept. Because you see, I'm a foreigner in Paris, and I need some light shed on a strange case. A murder, Mr. McPherson. A double murder. I don't wish to appear self-interested, but can we settle my fee immediately? This is the first time I've hired a detective. The case may take you a few days. I'll give you 500 straight away and 500 per day of fruitful investigation. That is a very reasonable offer. I accept. Money is not enough to thank you, Mr. McPherson. The service you are doing is invaluable. Thank you. Could you give me any more details about the case? So far, it all seems rather cloudy. I... I don't know where to start. It was a brutal murder, Mr. McPherson. But for what reason? Here, here in Paris. My sister. It's my sister Ruby who was murdered. She and her husband Regis were killed. Please find out what really happened. The murder was committed in Paris. Do you know exactly where in Paris? A hotel in the heart of a chic part of Paris. In the 8th district. The Hotel Orphée. They had been there for a week. They were found... dead in their room. How did they die? Are you certain they were murdered? Maybe they were victims of some terrible accident. The Whites were found decapitated in their hotel room, Mr. McPherson. Your sister and her husband were both American. What were they doing in Paris? I was supposed to meet them in Paris. You know, Mr. McPherson, visiting Europe was my sister Ruby's childhood dream. When she met Mr. White, Regis, her husband, he made that dream come true. They were so very much in love. Are the police on the case? It may complicate matters if they are. Do you know the name of the inspector who's leading the inquiry? The officer in charge of the investigation is named Le Prince. But the police are the same in every country, Mr. McPherson. 
Whether it's New York or Paris, they're hardly fast. That Inspector Lebrun is no exception to the rule. To be perfectly honest, I'm reluctant to take on this case. Primarily because a murder means a murderer. This Inspector Lebrun is better placed to arrest a killer. Mr. McPherson, if I'm asking you for your help, it's because I have no faith in the police. And that would be so even if I had the entire Quai des Orfèvres at my disposal. The 8th District Police Station, Le Brun especially, is trying to hush up the case so as not to tarnish the good reputation of their area. You understand. I think I have all the necessary information to begin. You want me to start right away. Is there anything you have forgotten? The police did not find any items of value in the room. Yet my sister and her husband traveled surrounded by luxury and family heirlooms. It was an obsession. Traveling with a lot of money is a risky business. It would be a pity if their murder was put down to theft. Are these family heirlooms valuable? Ruby's good luck charm. A sort of bust in my family for generations, on my grandmother's side. My sister was always her favorite. I hope to get results fairly quickly. I'll be in touch with you as soon as my investigations yield any new information. Goodbye, Miss Blake. Shouldn't you be investigating the case, Mr. McPherson? Quite sure, Mr. Beauvais, that you have not seen him? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Go on, Mrs. Elwa, go home. We will take care of this, I promise. Oh, thank you, Mr. Beauvais, you're so kind. The next time I'm at Cezanne, I'll bring you back a nice bottle of red wine. That's a promise. Hey, goodbye, then. Goodbye. A little bottle of red. Come on, next. Not so fast, buddy. If you're after the inspector, you have to see me first. Can I help you? Uh, I've been sent by the American government to investigate the murder that took place at the Hotel Orfe. Gus McPherson. The American Secret Service? But of course. And I am the Queen of England. Come on, papers please. Thing is, uh, back in America, we don't have any papers. It's a small country, you know. Everybody knows everybody else. No one does that to me. I want proof. My government knows nothing about my interest in this case. Just think of me as a private detective. A private dick. I see. Well, you'd better show me your license. A license? Of course I have a license. It's back home right now. I can go and pick it up if you want to see it that much but we'll waste a whole lot of time. Not bad, but you will have to come back. There is no such thing as permits for detectives. I thought you wanted to see my private investigator's license from New York. Sorry, it's good to know I don't need a license to work in Paris. This is not New York, Sonny. We are in Paris and we do not like little snoops here. Who hired you? For the moment, I can only tell you two things. She's the sister of one of the victims from the Orfe, and she trusts my services more than she does yours. 
The murder at the Orphée? Is it the victim's sister who is paying? That would surprise me. There was no family at all in this case. Anyway, it is simple. There is nothing to say. No more to the journalist than to the detective. You... you did not quite understand me. I'm a researcher, not a private detective. No, no, I, I'm a journalist, a, a reporter, for a newspaper. The news. I do not deal with you journalist types. I understand. It's always intimidating to come up against a journalist. In any case, I'm not supposed to speak to the police either. Shall we make a little exception? Journalist? For what rag, may I ask? You know, it's a newspaper in New York. The News. The New York News. I have family over there. Jules Quincampoix. You know him? He works for the News. King Campois. Y yes, yes, of course. Good old Jules. Your cousin is a nice guy. Just stop. Your story doesn't hold up. I never had any family in New York. You're a lousy liar. Look, anyone can make a mistake. I don't know this guy, it's true. But what does it matter? I have an article to write. I have to wire my piece to New York tomorrow morning or I'll lose my job. Come on, be a good sport. Forget it. Mm. It is baking in here, isn't it? You would not happen to have anything to drink, would you? Just one for the road. And my little gift? You do not have it? Fine then. Get lost. Sir, welcome to Shell Alexander. Can I do anything for you, sir? Your establishment has been recommended to me for its outstanding menu. Can a table be reserved? Near to a fountain, if possible. How unfortunate. We have no more tables available this evening. Perhaps you would like to come back tomorrow, although we don't open till 7 o'clock tomorrow, sir. Early next week would be the best. I'm so sorry, sir, but, you know, our medieval specialties are very much in demand at the moment. Today's recommended dish is white boar and barley beer, served in the Lute style. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Chez Alexander. Can I do anything for you, sir? I hear you have the best wine list in all of Paris. I would like to buy a bottle of wine from you. Red wine. Of course, sir. The price is very reasonable for an excellent vintage. Full of promises and empty-handed, huh? I do happen to have a little something for you. An amazing bottle of red wine. You cannot say no to that, officer. Don't you feel a little thirsty?
Great. Here is the pen pusher giving it another go. When I read the file, I noticed the name of a certain doctor, Frank Kofner. What can you tell me about him? Dr. Kofner is our expert. Forensic scientist and above all, psychiatrist. The sort of guy who prefers the company of madmen and corpses to the likes of you and me. You don't seem to be overly fond of Dr. Kofner. Is there any particular reason for that? The chief of police himself imposed Dr. Kofner on us. It's not going to help matters any. I've read the police report, but I'm sure you can tell me a little more. What are your impressions on the White case? This case is pretty messy. A foul murder, unclear motive. If Inspector Lebrun needs a hand, he will ask me. For the time being, he is managing on his own like a big boy. That is all I know. Of course, if Inspector Lebrun is surrounded by guardian angels like you, he can't be making much headway with his investigations. If he's not making headway in his investigation, it's his own fault. Lebrun is bending over backwards trying to find the mysterious visitor the Whites had that evening just before the murder. He's not even cross-checking the statements. Am I right in thinking Inspector Lebrun is in charge of the investigation on the White case? Would it be possible to meet with him? That way we can compare our information. He is not seeing anybody. Just make a statement. I've got some information on the Orfe murders. Exceptional information. Fresh info? You are better informed than us, are you? I think I have the number one suspect. Theo Malay. I believe he did it. Malay? You're mistaken, McPherson. Malay is not a murderer. He had no reason to kill the two Americans for their money. An old aunt just left him a fortune. If you have no objection, I would rather talk about this with Inspector Lebrun alone. If you want to speak to him, you have to confide in me first, Sonny. I give up. Could you at least give him my name? McPherson, Gus McPherson. And tell him I need to see him as soon as possible. You are wasting your time, Mr. McPherson. Lebrun specifically told me no visitors. Between me and you, he is already pretty busy sorting out all these statements. If we could have a picture of the suspect, our life would be easier. Goodbye. Yeah, right. Goodbye. These suitcases are heavy. And do not forget, young man, the elevator is still out of order. Oh, brother! Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphée. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? Gus McPherson. I'm a detective. A private investigator. 
I'm working on an investigation, a private investigation, the death of the Whites. Sorry, sir. I'm afraid I cannot help you. I thought you were the manager of this establishment. I'm sorry if I made a mistake. You are speaking to him. I am the manager. But I have no wish to answer your questions, sir. So you will not discuss it? Do you have any reason to feel guilty? Sir, we have nothing to be ashamed of. What happened in that room last night is not about to happen again. You seem rather defensive. Maybe there was some kind of security failure? Am I right? That is enough. You wanted a demonstration of the effectiveness of our security. Well, I am personally responsible for security, and my first act will be to throw you out. Leave, sir. You again. Sir, I have nothing more to say to you. What can I get you, sir? Give me a bottle of red. Sir? My name is McPherson. I'm a private detective. You really are a private eye? Just like in the movies? You've even got the hat, and you're American too. Oh, Private Dick. Yeah, a real detective. Investigating a real murder. The one at the Orfei. Golly, I wish I was a detective. So you're investigating the Hotel Orfei murder? If you agree to help me, you kind of become my assistant. Really? Of course I agree. An adventure. <laughs> Finally. Tell me about the evening. What was the atmosphere like? Yes. It really was a most unusual evening. Did you have any unusual customers that evening? You must be joking, my friend. Strange customers are all in a day's work for a waiter. That evening was no exception. Like the man who spent the evening alone at a table over there, besides the window. He left empty-handed. Been stood up, I imagine. The police have a suspect. I saw the inspector's report. What do you know about the man who spent the entire evening by the window? That is certainly true. He was here on the night of the murder. Until what time did the man stay? Now let's see if I can remember. He arrived at around 8 p.m., took a seat by the window, and dashed off just before the storm broke at around 11 p.m. Did you see what direction he went when he left? I don't know. You cannot see outside from in here. You'd better check at the Orphée. Petit, the receptionist, will probably know. He was on duty that night. What do you mean? A series of strange coincidences. The telephone was no longer working. The lift breaking down at the Orphée, uh, that still has not been repaired, incidentally. And to top it all, a violent storm breaking out just as the door closed behind the last customer. First thing the next day, I found out a double murder took place, right here, almost right above my head. And bang, your wine turns into vinegar. Some things you just can't explain. Just call it a hunch, a big hunch. Yes, that may be so, instinct. 
What can you do? I had this feeling about the White's murder. A kind of premonition. I just knew. I know exactly what you're alluding to. I had precisely the same feeling when the man left his observation post by the window. Like a shiver, thunder spine. Don't ask me why. And he stayed there alone for the whole evening. Now let me think. I saw him chatting for a while with Malay. Who is this Malay? Théo Malay. Works at the Orphée. He's a lout. Why is he a lowlife? He likes to bet. And when you do, you have to pay your gambling debts. It's a vicious circle. Malay is a bona fide con man. Did you notice whether Malay gave any money to this man? Uh, no, no, no. It's the man who gave the money to Malay. I remember, it was cash. And do you know where I might find this Malay? Malay hangs out at the Alambic, a bistro in the 14th district. That is where he gambles away his wages. Did you see this man with the whites? I have never seen the whites, under any circumstances. There's no way I would have noticed them with that man. So these two men may have no connection to the whites' murder. Sorry, but this is your investigation, not mine. I can only tell you the facts, nothing more. Could you give me a description of this mysterious character? You could draw him? That's really neat. I'll give you a description right now. He was tall, very tall, heavy, black moustache, square-faced, and dreadful eyes. Threatening even. A tough guy. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. My name is Gus McPherson. I'm a journalist for the Clairon de Paris. Could I ask you a few questions concerning the death of two American tourists? Name of White. That's it. White with a Y, not an I. Sir, you work for a vulgar little rag. Your newspaper is a, a hodgepodge of lies and innuendos. I'm sorry. I'm not employed directly by the Clairon. I'm a freelance reporter. Those newspapers could not care less about the damage they cause. Such words tarnish the reputation of our establishment. Who will want to rent that room now? Was it true what they say about the Whites? Were they really just American tourists here on a visit? That is right. Except that the Whites did not behave as tourists. They arrived on the 8th and, uh, if you will pardon the expression, left feet first on the 12th. In the intervening period, only Mr. White ventured out. And uh, ventured out is something of an overstatement. Uh, Mrs. White did not leave the room for the whole stay. Were the Whites always alone in their room? The Whites received no visitors during their stay here. They were adamant that they should not be disturbed, which is why I refused to give their number to a man who asked to see them the night before their murder. A man came to see the Whites on the night they died. Did he introduce himself? Do you know his name? Some cunning devil that was asking too many questions. Rather like you, actually. That's a rather large suitcase. Big enough to slip into. I'm sure. 
sure the front desk clerk will not like to see me going upstairs alone. Must find a ruse or persuade him to come up with me. Are you the manager? My name's McPherson. I'm from the International Office of WAI, Worldwide American Insurance. I'm investigating events that took place in your hotel several days ago. The murders. The insurance company. Perfect. The Whites left, shall we say, a rather substantial bill that really needs to be settled. You are here about the bill. The bill? Yes, that's right. I've come to settle their hotel bill. This bill is rather high. You are responsible for settling it. The total sum is exactly 2,500 francs. I know there's been a murder, but I don't know any details. How did it happen? That evening, somebody did not do their job properly. But what can I do? I cannot be everywhere at once. I shall be doubly careful from now on. Were the Whites always alone in their room? The Whites received no visitors during their stay here. They were adamant that they should not be disturbed, which is why I refused to give their number to a man who asked to see them the night before their murder. This man is suspicious. Have you told the police about him? Like every good citizen, Except that my memory is not what it was. I fear my description will be of no help in tracking this person. With the description you've given me, I'll be able to draw myself. I'm something of a painter, too. You are looking for a description with which you are going to produce a sketch, is that it? Well, I cannot wait to see this. The man was French, Parisian, in fact. No spectacles, no. Small, dark, rather wide eyes beneath large, thick eyebrows. Wide mouth, thin lips, a boxer's nose, solid build, a strapping lad, typical working class type. If you want any more information, contact the police directly. I'm afraid that I can do no more for you. I'll come clean with you. I... My employer is a rich American lady with no ties to the whites. She wants to take a room with you, but recent events have made her sick with worry. I have to check that she will be in no danger here. I have to give my report tomorrow, so you see, I do not have much time. Oh, that changes everything. What happened in room 507 was totally unique. My client insists that everything is checked before she confirms her arrival. A stay of several months maybe even a year, must be carefully prepared. So I have to visit the room. What number did you say it was? 507? The thing is, the police have not yet finished their investigations. Room 507 would be impossible. But the room next door, room 505, is identical. It even has a nicer view. A long-term stay calls for maximum comfort, does it not? Follow me, sir. I will lead the way. This is it. Unfortunately, room 507 is not accessible. The police has not yet solved this uh, sordid affair. But rest assured, it is an isolated incident. The hotel does not have a reputation as... What the... What is going on now? Would you excuse me for a minute? Don't mention it. In any case, I've always preferred to visit at my own pace. This door leads to the White's room. I can't wiggle underneath. I'll have to find a way to open it. Well, well. The key is still in the lock on the other side. If I could push it out, maybe...
Maybe I could use it on this side. the door is locked. The front desk clerk is hardly likely to open it for me. I must find a way to get in. You, the detective. You want to know? Come on in, and you shall. Welcome to my home, Inquisitor. Who told you I was a detective, madam? I am a seer. I simply see things others do not. Your little dog is your oracle. And he can tell the future. Well, that's just so special. Go ahead and mock me, like all the others, you philistine. Mark my words, this little ritual is only the beginning. A clairvoyant, really. What luck, so am I. I can feel the suffering radiating from you. Have you been the victim of visions, madam? Rather like me? Visions of murder? The White's murder. Young man, your instinct spoke to you. You are an artist, are you not? I'm also an artist. Perhaps you'd like to buy one of my paintings. Take this. They say Napoleon brought it back from his Egyptian campaign. It represents Thought, the Egyptian god of arcane knowledge, the Ibis of the Nile. It will help you on your quest. I shall be there to help you find the right path. So you think their death was the consequence of some ritual? The purpose of this ritual was to feed evil, young man. Do you believe that evil was in the White's room, just like you and I are in here? The Whites brought evil with them. Evil lurked inside them and devoured them from the inside out until they were one with it. I will remember what you said. Who knows? One day I may even need your clairvoyance. Should you have need of guidance, do not hesitate. Come back and see me. are the detective, are you not? Did you come into contact with the Whites? While well, they were alive, of course. If you saw them after that, it's your business. I was only their next-door neighbor. This evil, madam, did it know the Whites? No doubt your visions can guide us. Evil wormed its way into the whites. Slowly, relentlessly destroying their being. Despite the fact you have a reputation of being rather... Uh, eccentric, did you still get on well with the whites? I have never had any ties whatsoever with the whites, young man. They were appalling people. And what is more, they were cursed by evil. 
this evil, could you describe it or is it too abstract to be nailed down? Ancient, dark, hypnotic eyes, authoritarian. I can see a color, like a ruby, like blood. And this force of evil is what caused their death. Your eyes have met his. He knows you exist. His anger has not been lessened by the White's death. Please, be more specific in your ramblings. Describe this evil to me. Tell me what it is like. Be on your guard. Evil is temptation. It is man's primal sin. Mrs. Loiseau, I cannot arrest a culprit based on your ravings about evil. Please be more specific. My words cannot be understood, Mr. McPherson. They can only be felt. Come back later. I need to rest. Ah, it is you again. How is Mrs. Loiseau involved in this case? I really don't understand. Is she a witness? Is she a suspect? Can she be trusted? Madame Loiseau may be a little eccentric, but she is our best client. She has been living in the Hotel Orphée for many years now. Mrs. Loiseau would not be a bit, uh, how shall I put it, nutty? Not many people would dare claim that they can sense evil. In any case, I certainly would not. Nonsense and superstition! Any evil presence here is definitely human. People can be gruesome. Good. Well, if it's all right with you, I have a lot of work to do. Goodbye, sir.
engagement ring. How romantic. The engraving inside says, to fay with love. Who's fay? Sir? Can you identify this man? Yes, maybe. Yes, that's him. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, it is you again. Thanks to you, I've been able to draw up a portrait of a potential suspect. It's not perfect, but... But I think that with this, we are on to something. Now all we have to do is show it to the police. That crafty devil with the mustache! Then he is the culprit! Just one minute, Mr. Petit. I never said this man was guilty. I don't even know his name. With those killer's eyes, there can be no mistake. Good. Well, if it's alright with you, I have a lot of work to do. Goodbye, sir. are the detective, are you not? Do you recognize this man? Don't be afraid, it's just a portrait. It can't do you any harm. There is a resemblance. But I do not feel evil in him. You cannot identify my suspect. It is all so confusing. I saw the man so quickly and, and he was so terrifying. You really think criminals have a certain type of face? All I do is share my visions. I am afraid that if you're looking for anything more practical, it is the police you want to see, not me. 